Hello and welcome, my name's Nychronic, and today we're going to be going over my new player guide for Destiny 2 Lifefall. And this video should completely cover as an ultimate guide to everything you may want to know as a new player without making it too complicated while still feeling like you're getting the things you need to get on a weekly basis without missing out. And in case you're very new to Destiny or you've just never heard of my channel before, I personally been playing Destiny since the Destiny 1 beta eight and a half years ago and have probably put in over 10,000 hours into the series. On top of the spreadsheets that I create with damage testing and recommendations, the content that I've created across a bunch of different types of videos, and the many communities that I'm part of as they apply to Destiny. Moving on, let's go ahead and get started with my first point is going to be which class to pick. And you'll probably see across the internet people are very, very aggressive with their stances, almost xenophobic about which class to choose, and honestly, just pick the one you like the best. It could even just be the ones you like the look of the best. Because every single class can do every activity in a lot of different ways. However, when it comes down to it, generally, the Titans and Warlocks will be more defensive with barricades and rifts, and the Hunters will be more aggressive with their dodge and higher DPS supers. I personally play a Titan because I like the look of it, and it has a lot of great neutral game builds that depend on grenades and melees. And lastly, the jumps are different. Warlocks can be a little annoying to use, but you can get used to it. Number two, where do you start? There is a lot of content in Destiny 2, and they've honestly even removed a large section of content when they originally did Sunset. When you first start out the game, you're going to start the New Light campaign automatically. Obviously, do that first. It will introduce a lot of new things to the game. Once you finish that, you'll probably be given a main DLC or main season quest automatically or from the main guy in the tower. And honestly, I recommend starting with the newest content first, as the most people will be doing that. It will give you the most advantages and benefits to the season pass, etc. As long as you have the power to do it and i recommend being within around 20 power levels if it's too high don't do it go do something else and then of course return to the older dlcs as you wish because there's a lot of good stuff there as well and if you're looking for more quests to do a lot of quests are going to be found in the tower and the helm across all of the different vendors as well as the different bounties which there are a lot of bounties you can do in a lot of different places when i first start up the game i usually go to the gunsmith i go to zavala and i go to the helm all three of which can give you general bounties Number three is going to be about power leveling. Now, each one of your weapons and your gear will have a certain gear score, and the average of that will give you a power level, which will allow you to do more or less damage to the enemies around you, or even get into certain activities. Now, the way you increase that power level is going to depend on whether you're at certain caps. When you first start the game, literally everything will give you power up to 1750. Now, obviously this number will change, but it's usually going to be 60 under the pinnacle cap. After getting to this soft cap, you have to get powerful or pinnacle rewards. If you go to the map, which is called the director, it'll show a bunch of yellow things that will tell you to do certain challenges in a certain way. And a lot of these will give you powerful drops on top of prime engrams and exotics. Once you get to the powerful cap at 1800, you then can only get pinnacle rewards to increase your power beyond that, which are going to be things like the highest level stuff, like certain nightfall stuff, the raid, trials of Cyrus, etc. Again, all of these are going to be marked on the map. Beyond that, you can get more power advantages through the artifact, which is just general XP that will increase infinitely as you go along. Keeping in mind, the highest level activities will lock you below a certain power level, so a certain amount of power is not necessary. And a very important thing to note, which is a very common misnomer, is you do not have to equip or infuse the gear you're equipped to get the next drop to be higher. Although you do need higher power levels to obviously do more damage to enemies in certain activities, it can be anywhere on your account when it comes to the next drop. So a higher level gear could be on your character, it could be equipped, it could be in your vault, it could be in your postmaster, it could be on the ground. All of it will count for the next drop. So don't feel like you have to infuse every single thing you get. Now, honestly, I recommend not doing that for a long period of time. Number four, what is available to the free to play players and what is available for the DLCs? And in general, on screen, these are the things that you can play if you're playing Destiny 2 for free without any DLCs whatsoever. And these are the kinds of things that you can play if you have the newest DLC or specific DLC stuff. Obviously, see this stuff will change slightly over time as we go through the seasons and we go through the year. Number five, which guns, armors, and exotics should you be getting? And honestly, this is a very, very complicated question. Here's going to be the very simple answer. First up, as you get guns, try them out and see what you like. There are going to be a lot of options that you can use on the highest level. Just figure out what you jive with. And as a general rule, I recommend having at least one primary and one special weapon in every loadout until you learn more, because there could be a special or a primary in those first two slots. And yes, there are builds with double special or double primary, but those are usually more fringe and advanced cases. So stick to one of each for now. When it comes to the reason why you'd like certain weapons, it's usually going to be a combination of good perks and good stats. And every weapon type, every weapon frame will have their own 
own particular requirements that I believe are going to be the best. There may be certain generalities like explosive payload on primaries, auto loading on specials and heavies, and liking range in most cases, but stuff can get very complicated, which is why I originally created my spreadsheets, which I'm often very known for, which give you recommendations and top tens for all the different weapon types, exotic armors, and supers in the game. And those can be found at my Discord server, link in the description down below, and explained in detail on my top 10 videos. When it comes down to exotics, most will drop randomly in the game from kills and activity completions. You can also buy some from the exotic kiosk, which will give you certain past DLC exotics you can buy directly. I personally recommend With the Horde and Arianas, both of which are very cheap and very good across the entire game. With the Horde, general purpose, total damage, and Arianas having great range potential and built-in barrier rounds. And lastly, there are certain exotics that can only be gotten from these solo lost sectors. Things like Legend or Master Lost Sectors while solo to get those certain types of exotic. Those are usually going to be end game stuff, so probably won't be worrying about that for now. And one of the best ways to get exotics consistently is going to be from the Zerk, which is an exotic salesman that comes every Friday and leaves every Tuesday at reset. And he will give you one exotic weapon and one exotic armor for each of the classes. On top of legendary armor and weapons, which will have a fixed role for that week. So it's always good to check in with this guy every week to see what's going on. And there are going to be plenty of websites that will tell you where the Zer is and their recommendations of whether something is worth it. And similarly, the gunsmith and A to 1 in the tower will also have a set of guns and armors with fixed roles for that week. So again, great options to get it weekly in order to get good stuff as you go along. And lastly, the season pass, usually around levels 57 to 87, will have very good high stat armor, which will give you a good direction for stat build. Number 6, your subclass builds. And this is probably one of the more complicated parts of the game with aspects, fragments, mods, artifact perks, different combinations with weapons, exotic armors, etc. I recommend just starting simple. Figure out what you like and use it. If you really like using grenades, focus on grenades. Only when you get to the high level stuff will you need to focus on a certain type of build. Number seven, stats and mods. There are six different stats in the game that will affect things like ability recharge rate, your super recharge rate, your speed, resilience, and recover. All of which can be found in your character sheet, which also says what each one of these do. And these stats are usually separated into tiers, which are gonna be every 10 levels. The top three stats will also affect your class's ability recharge rate, specifically mobility for hunters, resilience for titans, and recovery for warlocks, on top of the benefits that they already give. Which is why it's somewhat difficult sometimes for hunters, because they need a lot of mobility for their dodge, but they also need to get high resilience and high recovery. Which leads to my next point, which in general, but not always true, I would recommend going for a high total stats with a focus on recovery and resilience, both for PvP and PvE. The other stats depend on your build, whether you're focusing on grenades, melees, or supers, and a common beginner trope is to invest a lot into intellect, and personally I recommend not going over 50. Anywhere between 3 and 5 is usually the sweet spot for intellect. And when it comes down to the mods, you get a lot of these from Guardian ranks, which you'll see in the game, and honestly, pick mods and artifact perks that go with your build and try different things out. Again, another thing that can get very complicated and don't feel like you need to have an end game build immediately. Just try the stuff you like and eventually go and look up those builds. Number eight, we have crafting, which allows you to get exactly the role you want on specific weapons that are available for crafting, as well as enhanced perks, making them even more special, which is totally good English. And to craft weapons, you have to go to the Enclave and unlock their particular patterns. To unlock a pattern for that particular weapon, which by the way, not every weapon is craftable, you have to get deep sight weapons, which are weapons that drop with a red border. Certain activities will have a higher chance of getting certain weapon types to drop with deep sight resonance. Once you get that weapon, either delete the weapon or go into the weapon and remove the deep sight from it, which will give you deep sight materials for crafting and give you unlock pattern progress. And usually you need about five of these per weapon to then craft the weapon that you will then need to level up to get certain perks to craft it with, which is usually a long-term process. And in general, crafting weapons is not necessary. It just allows you to get to that next level. And if you didn't know, there's a couple quests at the Enclave that allows you to very easily and quickly craft the Emmet Assault Rifle and the Taipan Linear Fusion Rifle, which the Taipan is a very good endgame Void Fusion Rifle. And when you craft a weapon, you have to level the weapon up by getting kills or completing activities with that weapon to unlock certain perks as well as the enhanced perks. Usually around level 17, you'll have everything. Number nine, let's talk about the story of Destiny. What is going on? Why are we fighting? Who are we fighting for? And how do we win? And this is just my very general understanding of the story to give you an idea of what's going on. If you want more information, I recommend a YouTuber called My Name is Bife, who has multiple, many hour long videos explaining certain things, and it is a 
extremely fascinating. When the universe first came into being, there were two entities, known as the light and the dark, technically from another dimension. To entertain themselves, they decided to create life, with one ultimate bet. The light believed that all life would eventually work together to create something new and beautiful. The darkness thought that they would all kill each other until there's only one left, Highlander style. And every time the bet was won, which has always been the darkness to this point, they reset the universe, created new life, and made it more complicated. In the most recent iteration of the universe, the light decided to fight back by creating the Traveler. And the Traveler, currently above humanity, allowed them to improve their intellect and capabilities, which eventually created the Golden Age, which allowed them to innovate incredibly quickly, expand colonies across the solar system with things like Exos, the War Mine, Clovis Bray stuff, etc. But the darkness created the darkness ships, which eventually closed in on all sides and eventually got to Earth. In the final attempt to support and protect the humanity, it just smacked the darkness ships out of the solar system, which allowed humanity to survive and eventually recover. Which brings us to the current age, where we as Guardians are currently collecting species like the Fallen, the Cabal, and perhaps even Savathun and the Hive to work together as the light against the darkness. And the darkness closing in on all sides, literally the beginning of Lightfall, darkness ships being on the doorstep of the Traveler. And likely we will have the answer to the end of this light and dark saga with the final shape, which is the following major expansion coming in a year or two, which will answer that ultimate bet. Will the witness witness the end of the universe again, the darkness winning, the universe resetting, or will the light finally win and create something new and beautiful? Up next at number 10, we have the third party apps, which if you don't know, Destiny 2 has an incredibly well-developed third party app ecosystem that allows you to do so many more things easier, faster, and better understanding. Other games, pale in comparison, in my opinion, to the amount of options that you have. In the first type of app, we have inventory management. Things like DestinyItemManager.com or Little Light app on your phone allow you to very easily transfer weapons between characters, the vaults, and etc. Now this may seem very simple, but it works wonders and is extremely useful in managing your inventory very quickly and easily without going back to the tower to see your vault. The second type are going to be LFG sites, which are going to be looking for group websites, which allows you to find people for non-match made activities, which are often requiring that you have a mic. Things like the Destiny 2 LFG PC Discord server, or the Fireteam Companion app on literally Bungie's website. Very quick, very easy, and honestly, more people really need to use this. And the third app type is going to be light.gg, which is literally the URL for that website, which is a very general purpose website that'll tell you, for example, every perk that certain weapons have, what certain perks do, including the percentages and literal stat denominations, and is my go-to website for understanding these weapons without having to use every single one of them or go through the weird collections in-game. And honestly, there are even more websites on top of this that do a bunch of other things. These are just the ones that I use consistently. And finally, at number 11, don't be afraid of high-level content. There's a lot of people out there, I would say the vast majority of people who are solo players who never touch raids, Trials of Osiris, Iron Banner, or even Night and honestly, this is some of the best content the game has to offer. The only real requirement for a lot of these things is going to be power level and that you have a team. And again, for those solo players, there are websites, the LFG websites or the Discord servers that allow you to find people to play with. People who will literally sherpa you through the game who don't mind if you've never done it before. And yes, there are unfortunately a lot of toxic veterans out there, which when you join their team, they'll ask you to know everything, never want any wipes and leave if you do anything wrong. But in my opinion, that is the minority, and there's a vast majority of people who are kind, willing to teach you, willing to Sherpa, and have a good chill time that can literally become friendships. So when it comes to those LFG posts, make sure you're looking for words like Sherpa, chill, and we will teach versus things like KWTD, which is know what to do. When it comes to champions, which are mini boss enemies found in the high level activities, which can be scary at first, but don't worry, there are a lot of ways to deal with them. A lot of weapons with built in rounds, like Ariana's with barrier rounds. The artifact is easier to use, so you just need to click that artifact perk for anti barrier pulse rifle, and any pulse rifle has it. And now we have these subclass verbs, which also affect champions in different ways, like suspend, stopping, unstop, or jolt affecting overload. 
which also includes the weapons that have those abilities too. And that is my ultimate guide for new players to Destiny 2 Lightfall. Obviously, I can get a lot more complicated with these things. I can get much more in depth, but this is just a general overview. And hopefully this helped you have a better understanding of Destiny 2, be more efficient with your grinding, etc. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I would also like to give a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Without their help, these videos and spreadsheets would really not be possible. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Kate Shaw, Waffle Iron, Robert Strayer, James Oster, Monday, Steve Bachman, Unipanther, Panther, Casey Reagan, William Peterson, and Arcos for all their support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Zach Chronic. I'll see you guys on the next one.